so we are sorry from our side there was some uh, network related problem so we'll resume again from the slide which we had discussed last time so we are discussing pathophysiology of congestive heart failure so likewise uh, like the like congenital heart defect they do cause a congestive heart failure but certain conduction abnormalities they can give rise to a uh, congestive heart failure especially tachyarrhythmia like supraventricular tachy cardia is common as in pediatric age group that can give rise to congestive heart failure how high output failure also we have discussed a uh, few minutes back so it's nothing but there is no abnormality in the myocardial function cardiac output is actually in initial period is greater than the normal but there is a determination in the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood which is secondary to anemia of any cause or because of the hypoxemia or there will be the increased oxygen demand secondary to hyperventilation or hyperthyroidism or there, there will be the uh, increased metabolic condition so they in response to all these things cardiac output is increased and reaches it to its maximum capacity and eventually heart fails. These conditions are called high output failure. So pathophysiology in short, if we see there will be the myocardial injury which uh, because of any uh, etiology which leads to the decreased cardiac output. So there are two things in compensation occur. One is there will be the carotid baroreceptor stimulation and there will be the decreased renal perfusion. So both these two mechanisms leads to the activation of sympathetic nervous system and activation of the renin angiotensin system. So because of this there will be the tachycardia and increase uh, cardiac contractility and cardiac output is increased initially. So that's why we use the beta blockers to uh, if there is a tachycardia. Vasoconstriction will be there which increases the upper load because of increased angiotensin 2 levels and there will be the hemodynamic alteration. There will be the increased preload because of increased aldosterone formation. So all these two changes occur because of the activation of renin angiotensin uh, system because of decreased renal perfusion. That's why we use the ACE inhibitors in the management of congestive cardiac failure to, to block or to treat these symptoms. So what is the etiology? What is the congestive heart failure? So it depends on the uh, age of the patient. There are certain conditions in antenatal periods that can give rise to congestive heart failure in fetal life also. We will see what are such conditions. So severe anemia because of heart failure in fetal life. SVT, ventricular tachycardia, complete heart block. Complete heart block can be seen if mother is having uh, SLE. Severe Epstein anomaly or other uh, right-sided uh, congestive heart defects can give rise to uh, congestive heart failure in fetal life also. In premature neonates, fluid overload, PDA, VSD, core pulmonary secondary to bronchopulmonary dysplasia, hypertension, myocarditis or genetic cardiomyopathy rarely can give rise to CCR. Full term neonate has different uh, etiological factors. Most of the time Cardiomyopathy is there secondary to birth asphyxia or CCF can be because of artery venous malformation or left sided obstructive lesions like coctation of aorta, hypoplastic left heart syndrome can give rise to congestive cardiac failure or there will be the complex congenital heart defect like single ventricular truncus arteriosus can give rise to congestive heart, heart failure. Myocarditis can occur secondary to some viral infection. Genetic cardiomyopathy will be rare. So, in infant and toddler age group, left to right shunts like VSD, large PDAs, large ASD, or AV septal defects can give a congestive heart failure. 
ये मेन जुमा एनेमोलस लेफ्ट करोनी आर्टरी ओरिजिन फ्रॉम द परमनी आर्टरी जेनेटिक और मेटाबॉलिक कार्डियोमेपैथी एक्ट हाइपर टेंशन सेकेंडरी टू एच यू एस और एस वी टी का सर्किट डिसीज कैन कॉज अ सी सी एफ की इनकम टॉडलर एज में इन ओल्डर की सर्टन एक्वायर्ड हार्ट कंडीशन में एक्यूट रोमेटिक फीवर और एक्यूट हाइपर टेंशन सेकेंडरी टू ग्लोमिनोनिफ्राइटिस माइकार्डाइटिस थाइरोटोमिस कैन कॉज अ कंजेस्टिव हार्ट फेलियर If patient is diagnosed with a cancer, certain malignancies, if he is on treatment like radiation therapy or medic, uh, anti-cancer medication like doxorubicin, they can have a cause of cardiomyopathy. Sickle cell anemia, endocarditis, core pulmonary secondary to interstitial lung disease or cystic fibrosis or certain genetic me- metabolic cardiomyopathy can give a CCFP older kids. features clinical features depend on the etiology and depending on the one's cardiac reserve they can have a varied symptomatology so we will see what are the uh, clinical features of the congestive heart failure in critically ill patient child who has exhausted all his compensatory mechanism so patient becomes symptomatic even at the rest other patient may be comfortable when quiet or they are not doing any activity but they are incapable of in- increasing their cardiac output in response to even mild activity without experiencing sim- significant symptoms so on history we get history of poor feeding poor weight gain tachypnea which is worsening during feeding like circulatory suck cycle in uh, early infancy we often see in case of vsd cold sweat on the forehead these are the certain clues we get on the history breathing difficulty specifically in uh, certain activities feeding or crying easy fatigability puffy eyelids or the fetal edema can get in older children so on examination we can see tachycardia gallop rhythm weak or 3d pulses as a compensatory response child is usually having failure to thrive is having perspiration cold and wet skin cardiomegaly will be uh, seen on examination left sided failure will give a symptoms of pulmonary venous condition like this patient will be having tachypnea or dyspnea on exertion orthopnea or there will be the bilateral crackles will be seen on the examination what are the symptoms or uh, signs of the right side at failure right side at failure will give a systemic venous congestion symptoms so hepatomegaly will be uh, seen in most of the patients there will be the uh, puffy eyelids distended neck veins or raised jvp can be seen pedal edema can also be seen but in pediatric age group mostly generalized edema also observed really increased jvp and uh, ankle edema is seen in pediatric age group its answer is not in most of the patient jvp especially in infantile age group it will be difficult to assess because the neck is short and the there will be the difficulty in observing the child in relaxed state so palpation of the liver or the hepatomegaly is the more reliable sign edema is usually generalized and involves eyelids sac- sacrum and low less often it will involve legs and feet so what are the investigation we will do to see the evidence of congestive heart failure so we do x ray which is the most reliable uh, investigation in which almost 90% of patient will have a uh, cardiomegaly megaly if there will be, there will be the uh, congestive heart failure we will see what are the congestive heart failure so on the left side normal size heart 
usually it occupies less than 50 percent space of the uh, thorax and pulmonary vascularity is normal but in con case of congestive heart failure there will be the obvious cardiomegaly will be there cardiothoracic ratio is increases more than 50 percent and there will be the increased pulmonary vascularity so this is the x-ray of patient having biventricular failure which is secondary to uh, certain congenital heart defect. So similar patient we have started uh, medication and see this x-ray. The cardiomegaly is definitely size is better compared to the previous x-ray and the uh, vascularity is also or congestion is also uh, improved and the patient also clinically improved after giving diuretics. Echocardiography we will see. This is usually less helpful for the diagnosis of particular etiology, but it should be done in each and every case of congestive heart failure to rule out the conduction abnormality. Echocardiography is the standard technique in assessing the ventricular function. The most commonly used parameter in children is fractional shortening, especially in impaired LV systolic function. And also on 2D echo, we can uh, calculate the ejection fraction. Ventricular chambers will be dilated or they are enlarged. And Doppler tissue imaging also is possible in case of impaired LV systolic and diastolic function. So these are the images of the 2D echo examination in uh, case of CCR. So you can see left atrium and left ventricle is they are hugely dilated. You can see on the right side, right atrium and right ventricle. So they are actually left sided chambers actually bulging enough to compress the right sided chambers. And this other image is the aim mode of the 2D echo cardiography. We can use M mode to calculate the ejection fraction. These are the other images of the congestive heart failure to the echocardiogram. What are other investigation? MRI, cardiac MRI can be done to assess the right ventricular function in right sided uh, cardiomyopathy or the certain lesions of right sided. Uh, congenital heart defects. MRI is used in uh, certain conditions. Cardiac catheterization can be done to uh, measure the pulmonary pressures and the pressure in different chambers of the heart. ABG is bed bedside we can do to know the decrease arterial oxygen levels and whether that acidosis is respiratory or the metabolic acidosis or the mixed acidosis. CBC, serum electrolytes, renal function test, HGPT can be done because there will be the tissue, tissue hypoxemia and other organs can also involve. BNP, serum B type natriuretic peptide is also elevated. It's a cardiac neurohormone. It's It's released in response to the increased ventricular voltage. It's elevated in heart failure due to systolic dysfunction in case of cardiomyopathy and certain volume overload condition like left to left to right shunt lesions. So the increased BNP is also one of the important marker of congestive heart failure. Also, also so what will be the final diagnosis? Final diagnosis will be whether this congestive heart failure is active or, or sudden or this is uh, chronic. Whether this is impending uh, congestive heart failure or decompensated congestive heart failure, whether it is low output or high output cardiac failure, whether this is biventricular failure or it is right sided or left sided congestive heart failure, whether this is systolic failure or diastolic failure based on the 2D echo evaluation with probable etiology being whether this is congenital heart defect or the other medical conditions, whether it is infectious or an anemia or the cardiomyopathy. We have to write the probability of it. 
so management so we have to eliminate the underlying cause we have to fight that's why diagnosis is very very much important because congestive heart failure is second usually secondary to certain intracardiac or outside the cardiac etiology so we have to find out what is the etiology we have to start the treatment on that line treatment of the precipitating or contributing causes like infection anemia arrhythmia will also be important remember four d's in the uh, treatment of the congestive heart failure which are these four d's diet diuretics digitalis therapy and dilators we will see you in detail in further slides so we have to ask patient to have a complete bed rest supplement oxygen supplemental oxygen should be given diet adequate calories and fluid should be uh, based on the patient's weight should be uh, given food should be calorie dense so increased calorie will be given volume should be less because patient is already in a congestive heart failure we have to give frequent for that we have to give frequent small feeding if patient is not taking orally we can give nasogastric feeding or we can give intravenous fluids also salt should be restricted there should not be any additional salt patient with pulmonary edema we can we have to give a positive pressure ventilation as there will there will be the uh, severe hypoxemia daily weight measurement in the hospital and children is important because they if they are showing improvement their weight weight edema will subside and weight will also decrease so what are the medication so what are the medication so inotropic agents diuretics and after load reducing agents so diuretics they interfere with the reabsorption of the water sodium by the kidneys so results in the reduction of the circulatory load eventually they decrease the preload and they control the congestion congestion symptoms which are these diuretics thiazide for the mild heart failure loop diuretic for the severe heart failure spirin and lactone which is potassium sparing uh, sparing uh, diuretic can be added what are the doses pirosemet 1 mg per kg per dose we can give two to three times a day till the patient shows the improvement and we can later on decrease the dose chlorothiazide hydrochlorothiazide spirin and lactone can also be given digoxin so it's important in the treatment of congestive heart failure it is a rapidly acting inotropic agent other rapidly acting inotropic agents like dopamine dobutamine uh, isoprotenol epinephrine or amprenone like milrenone can be other inotropic agents so first we'll see digoxin digoxin is a weak inotrop mechanism action is sodium pump inhibition so it acts as a sodium atph channel which promotes calcium influx with increased intracellular calcium and increased contractility so other actions of the digoxin are it decreases the sympathetic drive and parasympathetic activation will be there it also inhibits the renin release and so that it controls the symptoms of the congestive heart failure nowadays other important uh, strong inotropes are also available but some penetration use digoxin because main its effect is in slowing the ventricular rate or control the tachycardia especially if patient is having atrial flutter uh, or supraventricular tachycardia so its definitive indication is in chronic congestive heart failure condition with atrial flutter so what is the dose in preterm we give it 20 microgram per kg per oral in two divided doses term maybe it's slightly higher dose 20 to 30 microgram per kg one to 10 years child 25 to 40 microgram per kg per oral in two divided doses adult dose is 0.5 to 1 mg per oral maintenance dose is lesser 5 to 10 microgram per kg per day we can give it intravenously also dose is 75% of that of a oral dose 
what is rapid digitalization and slow digitalization. Rapid digitalization means we have to give a uh, therapeutic dose of the digoxin in a short period. So half, half of the dose is given initially followed by one per dose and remaining one per 12 hour. ECG is must before starting digoxin because digoxin has certain uh, side effects. So it can cause prolonged uh, PR interval or ST or T wave changes or it can set a new rhythm also. So whether patient is having all this rhythm abnormally primarily or they are secondary to digoxin for that to clear all these things we have to obtain a ECG before starting digoxin. Slow digitalization is nothing but the maintenance digoxin is given for the 7 to 10 days. What are the contraindications for the digoxin is? So absolute contraindication is uh, obstructive cardiomyopathy or WPW syndrome with atrial fibrillation or significant, already there is a significant AV nodal of type 2 or type 3, we should not give a digoxin or if there is a diastolic dysfunction. It, digoxin usually helps to improve the systolic dysfunction. Relative contraindication are low output state, volvular stenosis or acute myocarditis, hypokalemia, we have to closely watch for the side effects of digoxin or as far as possible we should avoid uh, giving digoxin in such conditions. So present, what are the indications for short term use of inotropic agents in cardiac failure? So other inotropic agents like dopamine, dobutamine or epinephrine can also be used. If there is a low cardiac output with poor peripheral perfusion is there, with hypotension, signs of end organ dysfunction or severe left ventricular systolic diastolic dysfunction, we should give a other inotropic agents which has a strong inotropic properties. So we are not going to discuss all this medication in detail, just remember additional inotropic agents which has a strong inotropic properties like dopamine, dubutamine and epinephrine. So dopamine is used if there is a cardiogenic shock and hypotension. Dobutamine it acts primarily on beta 1 receptor and is used provided blood pressure is normal or there is a hypertension. Epinephrine is given if there is no response to the initial dopamine or dobutamine inotropic support we should give a epinephrine also. So, we will see upper reducing agents, they are also called dilators. So, there are three types of dilator, arterial dilator, venodilator or the mixed dilator. Arterial dilator, just remember the name, hydrolyzing. It is less oftenly used, it decreases the upper load. Venodilator like nitroglycerin, isosorbide dinitrate, they dilate the systemic veins and redistribute the blood from pulmonary to the systemic surface and it decreases the pulmonary symptoms. Most commonly we use a mixed vasodilator. It is a ACE inhibitor. So ACE inhibitors like captopil you know, in an April, we often use in the treatment of congestive heart failure. Other mixed dilators are nitroprusside processing. ACE inhibitors they have additional benefit effects in cardiac structure and function that may be independent of their effect from the upper reduction. So they have a cardiac remodeling effect. So in chronic heart failure, congestive heart failure, which is there since long duration, ACE inhibitors, they are safely used. What are the side effects of ACE inhibitor? Hypotension, weakness, dizziness, synco, or hyperkalemia, maculopapular rash, neutropenia, chronic cough, can be the side effects of ACE inhibitor. So, upper load reducers, especially in congestive heart failure, they are used. Upper load reducers, especially using congestive heart failure, which are secondary to cardiomyopathy and severe mitral or aortic insufficiency, or in case of left to right shunts. So, we oftenly describe uh, ACE inhibitor like in an in case of in patients having congestive heart failure which is secondary to ventricular septal They are not used in presence of stenotic lesions of the left ventricular artery. 
because of there is a concern over the coronary artery. Beta blockers are used in chronic treatment of patients with heart failure who were symptomatic despite being treated with the other standard anti-congestive drugs. So beta blockers they are the reserve drugs. The specific beta blocker uh, we use are the carvedi. There are th these are the certain additional newer therapies. Just uh, you can remember the names. So intraaortic balloon counter pulsation. If patient is not responding to the medical therapy, these are certain additional newer therapies are in trial. Cardiac resynchronization or the pacemaker. We are using the uh, tertiary centers in the metro areas. So pacemakers can be additional newer therapy in the treatment of congestive heart failure. Implantable uh, defibrillator can be tried long term mechanical support by mechanical ventricular assist device like left ventricular assist device or total artificial heart. They are not used in the India but in the other countries uh, their use is observed. ECMO if patient is not responding to the all uh, possible medical management or the additional neural therapy, patient are put on the ECMO. ECMO is extracorporeal membrane, membranous oxygenation. It is nothing but the artificial uh, heart and lung bypass. So for that time being, patient is put on the ECMO. So oxygenation and pumping is done by the artificial machines. Cardiac transplantation is the last reason, especially it is in uh, cardiomyopathy patients. So there will be the, the certain questions. So what is the difference between right-sided heart failure and the left-sided heart failure? So right-sided failure will have a pulmonary venous, uh, sorry, right-sided heart failure will have a systemic venous congestion symptoms like hepatomegaly, red JVP or the ankle edema. While left-sided left heart failure alone will have a pulmonary congestion symptoms. The patient will be tachypneic. Uh, there will be the on examination there will be the bilateral crepitations. But hepatomegaly and uh, red JVP ankle edema is less likely. Which are the phosphodiesterase inhibitor used in the treatment of congestive heart failure. So certain dilators like Milrino, they are used in the treatment of congestive heart failure. What are the conduction abnormality due to deoxin? We have already discussed before starting deoxin, we have to start, we have to obtain an ECG because deoxin causes certain conduction abnormality, likely prolonged PR interval or type 2 AV block also deoxin causes. Which are the selective beta blockers used in the treatment of congestive heart failure? Is a carvedema. Answer is carvedema. So there is a eco image. I will describe because this it will be difficult for you people to understand. In uh, one side there is a this is LV and this is uh, left atrium, left ventricle and left atrium. In between there is a what? This is mitral wall. We can see there is a severe regurgitation across the mitral wall. This is mitral wall regurgitation, which is oftenly seen in case of rheumatic, acute rheumatic fever in older kids. In other two images, we can see this is aorta. There are two vessels which are.